Thomas J. Neff, you're in charge, now what in the 8-point plan? In the book, You're in Charge, Now What?, The 8-Point Plan, author Thomas J. Neff offers valuable guidance for individuals stepping into new leadership roles. Drawing inspiration from Franklin Delano Roosevelt's first 100 days in office, Neff presents an actionable plan to help leaders make the most of their initial period in charge. The book underscores the importance of setting realistic expectations, evaluating management teams, crafting strategic agendas, transforming corporate culture, and building strong relationships with boards and colleagues. Written in a well-organized and engaging style, this book summary provides readers with a comprehensive understanding of critical leadership skills and strategies that can be implemented in various management scenarios. FDR's Leadership in Crisis Franklin Delano Roosevelt assumed office in March 1933, during a nationwide crisis, to face the Great Depression and the closure of every bank. He declared, we have nothing to fear but fear itself, and went on to achieve an unprecedented number of achievements during his first 100 days of leadership. Roosevelt's decisive actions during the early days of his administration provide a model and inspiration for current and future leaders, delivering 15 messages to Congress, guiding 15 major laws to enactment, delivering 10 speeches, holding frequent press conferences and cabinet meetings while conducting talks with foreign heads of state. As business athletes prepare to fight for their new role, new leaders must learn from Roosevelt to set an unrelenting pace to determine the character of their term. The Countdown to Leadership The time between accepting a job and officially beginning is crucial for leaders to prepare themselves. Whether it is a few minutes or weeks, leaders must utilize this countdown period effectively. The book suggests 10 key points for leaders to keep in mind during this period. These include mapping out key challenges, studying the company's financial position and reputation, consulting top advisors, developing a 100-day plan, and assessing oneself honestly. Additionally, leaders should plan listening questions for the management team and employees, develop excellent relationships with colleagues and the board, help their family adjust, and prepare physically for the challenge ahead. By following these steps, leaders can define reality and begin their administration with clarity and purpose. Managing Expectations As a new manager, it's important to set realistic expectations and manage the expectations others have of you. Your first hundred days are crucial as your management style will be scrutinized. Employees are concerned with how the new leader will affect them, so it's important to be realistic in your expectations of others and take the time to address any doubts or concerns. By explaining who you are, why you took the job, and what you plan to achieve, you can help others settle down and work productively towards a shared goal. Shape Events, Shape Management In 2001, Gary Cusin became CEO of Kinko's when the company was facing a major loss in its international business. After discovering that none of the five vice presidents had traveled abroad in at least six months, Cusin fired them all and replaced them with one manager who was able to turn the situation around in just three months. The lesson here is that making an accurate evaluation of your management team is essential. Effective communication is the key to establishing a productive working relationship with your boss or board. When evaluating your team, consider not only the talent within the top positions but also how well they function together as a team. While importing executives may solve problems, it may also lead to a loss of institutional knowledge. As a leader, knowing the strategic strengths and weaknesses of your business units, and key metrics for measuring performance and improvement is crucial for success. So, shape events before they shape you, and always keep a close eye on your management team. Crafting a strategic agenda The key to improving your company's performance is to craft a strategic agenda that diagnoses your assets and liabilities from your customer's perspective. It's important to select a few areas to concentrate on that will yield significant returns. Pare down your strategy to a few high-priority action steps, communicate the top priorities to all levels of the organization and ensure adequate allocation of resources. 
Provide enough structure for direction while allowing the flexibility to respond to changing circumstances. A clear and well-defined strategic agenda can direct and mobilize people, driving organizational performance. Mastering Corporate Culture Change Every leader knows that corporate culture plays a significant role in a company's success. Therefore, understanding the culture is crucial in determining its values, modus operandi, and what it will take to transform it. The leader must study the people, the norms, the unwritten rules, and the power sources within the organization critically. To exert the authority, leaders must follow 10 guidelines, assess the current culture, understand what you are up against, listen and observe, identify how things genuinely get done, find the real sources of power, be transparent, renovate and renew the organization, be shrewd from the start, try different approaches, and continually evaluate the organization's tolerance for change. By implementing these guidelines, a leader can transform the organizational culture and ultimately pursue business success. The Importance of CEO-slash-Board Communication CEOs face increasing demands from today's boards. Establishing good communication is vital to success. Remember CEOs are appointed, not anointed. Crisis management. New leaders often face crisis situations. To handle a crisis effectively, it is crucial to listen to others, communicate information promptly, and be aware of nonverbal cues. In a crisis, making bold decisions is easier, and it is imperative to use the situation as an opportunity to bring about meaningful change. Showing a willingness to learn and collaborate is more important than acting like you have all the solutions. Avoid these leadership pitfalls. New leaders should avoid unrealistic expectations, snap judgments, indecisiveness, arrogance, living in the past, stifling dissent, ignoring the true sources of power, fighting the wrong battles, badmouthing predecessors, and assuming a good start guarantees long-term success. Although the first 100 days are critical, they're only the beginning of a long marathon, and leaders must pace themselves accordingly. After addressing initial crises and settling in, the real work of leading begins, with each 100-day period enabling growth, reflection, and goal-setting. Don't let common missteps trip up your progress, succeed in the long term. Thomas J. Neff's book, You're in Charge, Now What? The Eight-Point Plan, furnishes readers with essential principles and techniques for achieving success during their first 100 days in a leadership position. Among the key takeaways are preparing well before assuming the role, setting realistic goals for oneself and the organization, assessing and reshaping corporate culture, focusing on the most impactful strategies, and maintaining open communication with peers and superiors. By following Neff's advice and learning from historical leaders like Franklin Delano Roosevelt, readers will be better equipped to tackle the challenges that come with new leadership responsibilities. This book summary wraps up the holistic message by reminding leaders to pace themselves as they embark on the marathon journey of organizational management.